What is up guys? In today's tutorial, we're going to be working with a magazine cover. Um, this is just one of the many different ways that you can uh, create a magazine cover. But I just wanted to go over some of the things here that we've been doing, which is working with our elements of design. I also want to give a special thanks to my senior student that allowed me to use his picture for this cover. Um, so one of the things I wanted to cover are all the elements that we've been doing with the exception of variety, uh, but we have unity. So with unity, we have color matching in the magazine. That's how you know that all these belongs together because we have this little neon green, neon green, neon green, neon green, and then we have this like little white grayish color that we have there, which, which pretty much unites everything together. Um, we also have repetition in the shape, so we have rhythm here that I used right here. I, I used it pretty much just to uh, give some design to the magazine and, uh, and also show rhythm within the magazine. Um, we also have emphasis, you know, the person is bigger than everyone or everything. And then HSA Dallas is the next biggest thing. So the first thing you look at is the subject, which is what usually what you're trying to attract the attention of in the magazines. You always want to be able to let people see the person first before anything else. And then you want to make sure that the title of the magazine is is fully functional you know that people can see that next uh, so I think this does a pretty good job you see him first then you go over to this and you just read down the line after that uh, proportion so we're do showing a difference between words uh, proportion whenever it comes to actual design it's usually used to emphasize more important words than less important words um, so for example here we have schools most popular so school is in bold and big and then most popular is not school turns teacher of the month into eye of the tiger and so we have uh, in bold letters eye of the tiger because that's new that's what's important now we want people to know about that then ranked best school best school is in bold it's also a different color it brings attention so that people can read best school, HSA Dallas. Um, then we have balance. Balance, all the words are to the left side, while the image is big enough to the right side. So, I mean, we could have easily decided to put words on the left and the right side and have the guy be in the middle. Um, we could have done that, but the reason why I didn't was because in this specific picture, uh, the guy actually is uh, kind of chopped you can't really tell but he's chopped up right here and he's a straight um, it's a straight edge also just look at how it looks at the moment I bring this over to the center it just it looks like something is missing here now uh, it's no longer balanced so you want to make sure that this goes over to the right and that everything is balanced out, you know. At this moment, we don't really care if we cover up part of the letters for HSA Dallas uh, because we already know what the magazine is. We can kind of distinguish there. So that's perfectly normal, but we do want to make sure that our design feels balanced. It doesn't feel like if I were to put him here, now it feels like something is missing up top, you know, and we got to fix that. Uh, so... We always got to make sure that our design is balanced out correctly. So as I mentioned, we were using here unity, rhythm, emphasis, proportion, and balance. And so now I'm going to go ahead and get started on showing you guys how we can accomplish this specific uh, magazine cover so that you guys can, you know, get the idea and we can work on our own fairly soon. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and go to File, New. And in here, we're going to make sure we have inches. We're going to switch this to magazine cover underscore tutorial. And we're going to switch this over to 11 and height 8.5. And our resolution, we'll keep it at 250 for now. And actually, uh, I, I just realized here, 
um, this is on landscape so we got to switch it to portrait so it should be 8.5 in width and 11 in height so make sure you switch that over and we'll go ahead and click create that's gonna give us our blank document so now I included some images for you guys so we're gonna go ahead and open those images head over to uh, right here uh, principles of arts magazine covers so under files use you should have the picture of uh, the person so we're gonna go ahead and click open and that's gonna open it in a different uh, in a different tab here in Photoshop I'll go ahead and close these out so as not to get confused too much but from here what we want to do is we want to select him and move him over here without that background so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our selection tool which is going to be the fourth one here quick selection tool and now the quick selection tool uh, it kind of determines for you what it's selecting uh, the more complicated the background is the harder it is for the quick selection to do a good job but this is a white background and the image is fairly easy to make to grab so it shouldn't be that complicated when you have the quick selection tool make sure that you have here set to plus some of you might have it on minus or some of you may have it here just make sure you have the plus selected um, let me see here. yeah make sure the plus is selected now make sure you have a check mark on auto enhance make sure that is selected as well and then as far as your size we can go with um, 125 is fine and make sure your hardness is set to 100 and your spacing is set to 25. From there what you're going to want to do is make sure that you click inside the body. Do not click anywhere outside and when you click one time you'll start to notice that it's starting to grab stuff and so as you get closer and all I'm doing here is clicking, clicking clicking close one click I'm not clicking and dragging just a simple little click and then come this way and you notice that it's it's kinda grabbing everything so here's when I'll go ahead and start clicking and holding and I'm just gonna drag downwards click and hold drag downwards click and hold and drag this way and so now we have a pretty good selection make sure that when you're selecting this that you can kinda see that it selected pretty much everything so like right here if I zoom in you notice that I didn't grab some of the fingers so I'll just go ahead and click one time right there I'm gonna make my brush just a little bit smaller and click one time right there and one time right there so okay and this is good that this happened so as I clicked on this finger it just selected a lot more that it wasn't supposed to so what I'm gonna do is switch over to my minus tool up here at the top and then I'm just gonna try to very carefully undo all this that it grabbed and so this might take time depending on how how easy this becomes for you so just make sure you do a good job to start off with and once you have your selection and uh, it looks pretty decent we're gonna go up here to where it says select and mask once we press that you'll notice that we have quite a bit of mess here um, a lot of little things that were messed up uh, if you're if you have this like March Nat, onion skins on black on white black and white whichever one you have selected just make sure you put uh, the one that's on red and then make sure your opacity your opacity just make sure you have it set to 100 uh, what that allows you to do is the opacity will allow you to make it look a little more see-through and you know at 100 it just shows you a complete red so you know exactly what you're selecting um, then we're gonna go ahead and put two on our radius and go to smart edges and then over here on our tools we're gonna want to make sure we select the refine edge brush which is this one right here make sure it's set to plus 150 is fine and here 
what we're going to do is very carefully through the outside, do not color on the inside, color on the outside over here. Just very carefully start coloring in on this hair part right here. I want to do it kind of slowly. And that's just kind of grabbing all these edges for us. So as you can see, it's kind of removing all these little excess parts that we had here. So I think that looks like a pretty decent selection, but if you zoom in a little bit, you'll notice how it kind of looks a little weird as well. So if we switch this over to like black, we might be able to see this mess that it started making here. So what we want to do is fix that. Uh, so that it doesn't look like that and the way we'll do that is our shift edge we'll put it to like negative 10 or yeah so let's try like maybe negative 25 yeah that looks a little better oops negative 25 there we go. So that looks a little better right there. And we'll go ahead and over here where it says output settings. Right now if we output it's just going to make a selection but we don't want to do that. What we want is to make it into a new layer with a layer mask. And I'll go into layer masks later on a little more. But for now uh, let's just go ahead and make sure we select layer mask. And we're going to click OK. And that's going to separate him from the background. If you notice, we can click on and off, and now he's separated from the background. So from here, what we'll go ahead and do is we're going to grab our selection tool, make sure we're selecting this background layer copy, and we're going to click, and once we can move him around, we're going to move him up to this tab, then down into the white, and then once you're inside the white, you let go. And that's going to bring him into your magazine cover that we're working with. From here, what you're going to want to do is go ahead and press Control T, or you can also go over to Edit and click transform, uh, Free Transform. Now make sure that when we resize this, you hold Shift. Let me show you what happens if you don't hold Shift. You can do things like this, and then that's going to look really weird. That's not how he's supposed to look. So what we're going to do is press Control T, hold Shift, and then go ahead and resize. That will allow us to get like a decent size here. So what we want is something that looks kind of like that. And so from here, this looks pretty good. Now we're going to go to Edit, Transform, and we're going to flip him horizontally. That's going to put him off to the other side. And we'll just put him here for now. And go ahead and press the little eyeball because we're done working with him at the very moment. We don't need him right now. So the next thing that we want to do is select our background colors. So we're going to select the background layer right here. Make sure your background layer is selected. And we're going to grab our, under our paint bucket, we're going to grab our gradient tool. So if you see the gradient tool, it should look like this. If you don't see the gradient tool, you might see the bucket. Just make sure it's right there, it's hidden underneath. Make sure you leave it pressed, you select the gradient tool. Right here, as you can see, I have black and red and you can already see up here that it's black and red. Every time, this very first one is always going to be the two colors you select here. So for example, if I turn this to green, you now see that it's green to red. That's just the very first one that I have selected. Uh, so what I want to do is go ahead and grab something that's kind of like a teal color around there. Then I'll double click on the red. And you notice that when I double click on the red, you notice that this little eyedropper shows up. So wherever I click, it starts selecting that specific color. You notice here that it's changing to black, to white, to black. And so here, I can actually choose this teal color, select that one, just make it a little brighter. Click OK. So now I have like a bright to dark one. Make sure the bright one is on top 
so you can switch it with the arrows. Make sure the bright one's on top. Make sure you have the radio one selected, which is the second one. Make sure this is set to normal and opacity is set to 100. Now what you want to do is click somewhere in the center and drag outwards to the edge. And that's going to give you a nice little gradient. Um, and now we can begin typing our work here. So for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go up to, uh, to Window, Arrange, and I'm going to put 2 up vertical. This allows me to see both of them. So I'm going to bring this guy over here. And now I can see this. So you guys don't have to do this part. You can just follow along in my tutorial as, as I'm typing this. But this is just for me so that I can actually see what it is that we needed to do. So the first thing we need, we need to do is grab our shape tool. With our shape tool, we want to switch the color over to something about neon green. A little more yellow here. There we go, something like that. You guys can copy these numbers if you want the exact number that I'm using or this one here. Uh, either of those will get you the exact color. Uh, and I'll go ahead and press OK. From here, I'm going to make a little shape just like so. And I'll have that. There we go. So there is one thing that I forgot to mention. If you don't see these rulers, and this is very important, guys. If you don't see these rulers, press Control R. Control R will bring up the rulers. You're going to want to drag from the left side here and put a line right at half an inch right there. Bring it from the top and bring another one right at half an inch. Same thing over here. So from 8.5 to 8. So we want to put this at half an inch. And that's the line we basically can't cross. Let me go ahead and move this one a little bit. We can't cross that line as far as all our words are concerned. Our words need to stay within those lines. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put this guy right here to where it touches. And I'll go ahead and grab my type tool and type HSA. And you want to use the font called Nexabold. If you don't have it installed in your computer, just let me know and I'll go ahead and install it for you. But it should be installed into the computer. So Nexabold. And we're going to go ahead and put this up to the corner right here. Go ahead and press Control T. We're going to stretch this out a bit. And just move it up. There we go. I'm press T again so I can be able to type here. So I basically selected my type tool. I'm going to click on HSA, highlight it, come over here to my colors, and switch this over to almost white. There we go. And I'll just click my check mark. From here, what I want to go ahead and do is type out again Dallas. Click OK. Grab my selection tool and move it up here underneath. From here I'm going to press Control T so I can transform. I'm going to hold Shift so I make this a little bigger and bring it up to right there. There we go. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to zoom in and I notice that this is not aligned right now. The, the rectangle is a little bit bigger than the rest of the words and this is not straight either so I'm going to go ahead and grab Dallas just bring it to where it's at the same angle and maybe bring this guy a little down so that it touches with that. There we go. That looks pretty good to me. If we put this guy right here, he is fitting in perfectly. Go ahead and make him maybe just a little bit smaller. There we go. So far he's looking in he's looking perfect right there so I'll go ahead and minimize him and uh, continue working on this. So from here we're going to go ahead and grab our uh, shape tool and go to custom shape. Under custom shape you want to select the arrow. Zoom in. Cancel. Zoom in. And then I'm just going to go ahead and make an arrow that starts right here and leave it just like so. Then I'll go ahead and grab my type tool and I'm going to type schools and put it right here. 
Then I'm going to grab my type tool again, and I'm going to type most popular. Now you notice this font is a little too bold, so I'm going to go ahead and highlight it, and I'm going to switch it over to Nexa Light. Switching over to Next Light will give me uh, a similar style font, but it's just going to be uh, thin. So I'm just going to make this a little smaller. And so my goal here, I'm going to zoom in, is that I want these to be right there. And this guy to be right there. Pretty much I want it aligned with my arrow. I don't want this guy standing up here and I don't want this guy like down there. I want to make sure that it is perfectly aligned. And so once all these are aligned, I'll go ahead and grab schools and most popular together. Bring them over to the side. There we go. And then from here, we're going to go ahead and do the little uh, the little shapes that I created. So we're going to go ahead and grab our shape, select it with the selection tool. Make sure these two are off, guys. A lot of you turn those things on. Make sure they're off. And uh, just go ahead and press Alt, move it over, move it over. And then once we have those, go ahead and select the very first one. And then the very last one. So hold shift and it'll select all of them for you. So if you select again, if you select the first one and then hold shift, it'll select the last one for you. You can go ahead and press alt, move it over to the side, control T. And we're going to rotate it holding shift. If you hold shift, it kind of like clicks every single time. So we can do a perfect turnaround. Press OK. Switch over to a circle. Make our circle. Click on this green right here and select any one of these colors. There we go. Click OK. And we're going to put this guy right here. Make sure that he's centered. And now you notice that we have all these shapes here now that are kind of just really bugging me. So what we're going to go ahead and do is grab the first one, grab the last one by holding shift so you can select all of them. And we're going to press control G, which is going to group them into one folder. And we can double click inside group and just name this shapes. So now you can see that those are the shapes. After that, we're going to go ahead and type out school turns enter teacher of the enter month into comma and just leave it like that. So you've noticed here that when I type that out, uh, I have a lot of space in between all of these words. So what I'm going to do is highlight all of them. Open up this little A, which is character. Now, if you don't see the letter A, just go up to window and make sure that you see characters right here. Put a check mark. That'll make it pop up. And right here, this 38.7 is the space in between the words. We're going to switch this to auto, and it's going to bring them in a little closer. And from here, we're going to switch the type over to around 18. And we're going to put this over to the line right here. So now what we want to do is go ahead and type out another one and put I of enter the tiger and quotations. Highlight it and switch that over to Nexa bold. We're going to put that right here. Control T and make that just a little bit bigger. Press OK. So now the last one is going to be ranked. Enter best school or sorry, 
best enter school. So right here we're going to go ahead and highlight them. Instead of auto, we're going to put maybe somewhere like 16. Size 18 is fine for right now. We're going to highlight ranked only. And we're going to switch ranked over to next to light. We're going to highlight best school only. We're going to double click here and switch it over to the green that we have. That looks pretty good to me. And we're going to go ahead and zoom out and put this down here. Bring our eye of the tiger and school in here. Maybe control T, make it just a little bigger. Bring our shapes down just like so. Then most school popular Gonna highlight all those, bring it down a little bit. And then now we can open this guy up and we have our cool little image uh, that looks like a nice uh, magazine cover. So let me go ahead and go back over to my onto tabs. There we go. And so this will be our magazine cover. Now I know this could be a little bit complicated, but take your time, listen very carefully to what I'm saying, and uh, and try to recreate this magazine. Uh, we're going to be working with using our elements of design to recreate a magazine, and uh, I really want you guys to get the hang of uh, how to design one in a unique, uh, nice, elegant uh, style. Hope this tutorial helped, guys, and I'll catch you all on the next one.